Hello, and welcome to the Triforce podcast. Good morning. <coughs> joining me, joining me on this. <laughs> I'm, I'm dying. I am actually. I have. I thought it was hay fever, but I actually think it's just a travel cold. Yeah, I got a cold cool. whilst whilst traveling. En français. Yes. Une maladie. Uh, une maladie. Uh, je je rencontré une maladie quand je j'étais en Paris. Um, I went to uh, I went to Disneyland again. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> it was just the same as it was six months wow. ago. That's crazy. I know. I know. It was uh, unprecedented. What's happening to you, dude? How did this? What's My kids. Happening? The last time we went, it was like the the golden time to go in terms of their ages and right. they really really savored the experience so much that when we got back they were so upset and uh, and we were all so bummed out that i was like you know what we got to go again but we'll go again when the weather is a bit better we'll mm. go in the during the may half term because like six months away or whatever and they were like yeah okay let's do that and we went and it rained every day but it wasn't like pouring rain it was just like drizzly kind of it felt like we were in England for a week, you know? It was just gray and uh, and drizzly and just like a little bit windy sometimes, but doable, you know? Like it didn't ruin the, the whole thing. Right. But it was fun. You know, we went on Pirates of the Caribbean, I'd say like 500 times. And uh, <laughs> we went on Star Tours like 500 times. And uh, it was fun. It was, it, it was, a, it was actually, actually a really good trip. We, we like staged it out a little bit more. So we spent more time in like St. Malo and, uh, and Wren and stuff on the way up. Um, and then when we got there, we maximized the time that we had in Disney, like, like park tickets and stuff. And then um, we had an extra night in Paris before we, we left. So it was, it was a little bit less hectic than the previous time. And therefore a little bit more enjoyable. And and they're all like that little bit older too. So I think they they really enjoyed it. And the baby is like getting bigger now too. So mm. a lot less hassle, you know. We didn't need to bring like formula milk with us or anything like that. She's like she's she, she's like on the verge of being toilet trained and stuff. So it's like it's it's pretty good time, you know? Pretty good time in our family for these sorts of uh, excursions and nice. um, yeah, it was nice. It was good. It was good. nice. I mean, I need a a a, a vacation now that I'm back as you know as usual but but it was fun it was good i, I was good break. i want you to do that um youtuber style disney review you know t what's that what's that girl who does like those four hour long disney oh videos? man there's all oh, there's tons of them jesus I, I i went down a bit of a rabbit hole with with a lot of that stuff while we were away because it's just you know like when you're there you're like oh i wonder what other people think of this stuff and i wonder what the other disney lands are like i've been to some of them and but like i've never really like you know stayed in or near them uh, you know like it's always been i remember some of them from being a kid or like i remember going to like the one in california when we were away for blizzcon or whatever and uh i was watching i was watching ride footage from some of the Disneyland rides in Shanghai, which were all mad. Like it was insane. It's, just like, it's like they they just get like a different Disney <laughs> over there somehow. I don't know. It's, Why? How? I don't know. It's just mental. Like I just it's it just seems like crazier uh, somehow. I don't know. Like they have more fun with it. I don't know. The rides seem more exciting. I, I I don't know what it is, but it's just and it's all in Chinese too, so I can't understand a single word of it. You know, like <laughs> right. the French one, I can understand some of it, although. Like Pirates of the Caribbean, some of it's in French and like I can't, because it's busy, you know, all the pirates are all talking to each other and yelling and drinking and yo-hoing and stuff. So it's like, I don't know what they're saying either, but <laughs> the Chinese one is just like impossible. Like I, I don't even know where to start. So but. do your kids think the sort of idea of Disney is a bit of paradise is a bit French? You know, do they? Yeah, I think they... so. I, well, <laughs> they don't. They've never been to like a you know one of the American ones, which is obviously all in American in English. <laughs> it's all in English. Um, so, and I, I said to them, I was like, "Do you do you guys want to try to go to one of the you know we can go to Disney World? It's huge, or we can go to the one in California, maybe like in a couple of years, like for the next one." And they're like, "No, no, let's just go back to Paris." <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of like set in their ways, you know. Kids, kids do like what they like, right? Like it's quite yeah. Fun. Yeah, they like the. I think there's some comfort in the familiar, right? But I mean, yeah. the thing is, it would still be familiar because I mean, Disneyland is Disneyland, right? It doesn't matter what country you're in. Like there, there'll be there'll be little differences, but overall, it's more or less the same, right? Like mm. the park layouts and stuff, or you, they they look 
similar, familiar, whatever, and like I don't know, but do they? I don't know. Kinda. I didn't think so. Yeah, I thought they bit. were all quite different. Like catered well, to like their... like lay like like the uh, like physical layouts different. The one in Paris is meant to be one of the better ones, but. I mean, like Main Street USA is is pretty much the same across all the Magic Kingdom parks, uh, and the whole like uh, you know like the center uh, circle that spokes out into the different lands, like that that kind of stuff is all relatively God. the same, you know. Mm. I guess I've been to all of them. Then have you been to so, the one in Shanghai? Well, not Shanghai. So you, and you, have one. you been to Tokyo Disney Sea, yes. the, the one in Tokyo? I have. Yeah. Right. So and I, you've been to the one in California. Yeah. You've been yeah. to the one in Florida. I have, yeah. You've been to Euro Disney? Yeah. So you're missing one Disney. <laughs> I'm missing the Chinese one, yeah. Yeah. Which I can't... I'm missing <laughs> the Chinese one as well. I've been to all yeah. the other ones too. <laughs> Gotta collect them all. <laughs> oh, yeah. fuck's it's, sake. I, I think they're all quite different though, feel, yeah, in vibe. You know, I don't know if... Yeah, you, they you, are, but they're still I Disney, I guess they right? got replicate like a similar feel so people could enjoy them. Yeah. Just... I just, it's just, I just find it so interesting. It is. I, yeah. It's different well, when you go with kids though. Cause like, I don't know. There's just, there's, there's times when you're with them and you're like, Oh my God, this is insane. Like how have they built this place? And how do so many people come here and know about it and do, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you go somewhere and you're like, I wonder if it'll just be like kind of empty, you know, like time of year or whatever. It never is. It's always fucking packed. Like it hmm. just to the gills. And you just think, damn, like, how does everybody just have this, you know, same idea to do the same thing I'm doing? And I don't know, you, you have moments like that. But then you have these sweet moments with kids too, where like, uh, at the end of the trip, it was our last day. And we went on Pirates of the Caribbean, which is my daughter's favorite ride of all time. She fucking loves it. Like we went on it so many times. And on the last one, I looked over and oh, bless her, she was crying. I was like, oh, are you all right? She's like, I don't want to leave Disney. I was like, oh, fucking hell. You just, you, for that moment, you're just like, I wish that everything would just be frozen in time and we just lived here and did this forever, for eternity. You know what I mean? Like you have those kind of moments with your, with your kids, which is mm. really sweet, but, and heartbreaking too, because- uh. Yeah, you have to do, you have to sort of be the uh the the boring person who tells them, "Oh, yes, or you got to go to school in 2 days and stuff." So Yeah. As yeah. they get older as well, they sort of uh they enter that phase. I feel like you you start off with a childlike enjoyment of pretty much everything. Like yeah. I I think of all the holidays I've taken my kids on and all the things we've been to and they when they're little, they love they have a natural love of like nature and animals and and seeing cool things and everything, you know, the scale of a building or a gallery, they can take pleasure in even just the size of a room, the yeah. sound of their voice in that room, yeah. all those little things. And that gives you that sort of wonderful sense of, uh, of just exploring things from a, with, a, with a child is, is very, very different from going with another adult. Yeah. But then your kids enter this other phase where they hate everything and they're like grumpy teenagers. Yeah. And then... I guess you come out of that and you come back to our age we're like, look at that flower. So you sort yeah. of have this dip in the point of your life where you've got to be getting on with like, what are, you, what are your mates saying on WhatsApp? And then you come back around to just enjoying a, a yeah. view or something. We had, we had moments on the trip where I felt like we were not a family of five, but we were like a family of 15 because... Um, Every time we'd stop at a, you know, at a hotel or, or whatever, we'd just like hunker down for the evening. My son would just be like on FaceTime with all of his friends because like <laughs> the new Fortnite season dropped. Right. <laughs> like all of them were on vacation somewhere. So they couldn't really like, you know, play together, but they were all on FaceTime watching like their favorite Fortnite <laughs> YouTubers and yeah. talking about the battle pass and stuff. Oh man. It's like, hey, who are you on with now? And he's like, oh, I'm on with uh, Billy and Brian and uh, <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> it's like, okay. It's pretty funny. Yeah, my kids fucking love a bit of FaceTime. That's, uh, yeah. it's funny. I personally hate FaceTime. I hate, like, I hate everything about it. I hate the delay and, like, it's awkward and, oh, fuck, I hate... I just, just Discord works fine for me. I don't yeah, need it, you know. or, or just the phone. I don't, I don't ever call my mates up just for a chat. No. Like, I, I, I 
never I, I i started doing that with with a few friends you could really just sit and natter with them on the phone or whatever but but i, I have not called someone in a long time yeah uh, i mean i call lulu occasionally if i can't get his attention otherwise i'll call him uh when i'm in bristol or whatever but it's like we're not just chin wagging on the phone it's like we're oh. gonna go for dinner and then we'll go to that place and then yeah. we'll talk but yeah, yeah it's funny isn't it it's weird eh? I, I had a different weekend me and mrs f had decided we're gonna do uh, there's something called the Capital Ring, which is like a walk around London. Oh. Um, and it's it's not it, it tends to be on the, the quieter, sort of more um off the beaten track parts of London. So we right. did the Capital Ring part from uh Richmond Bridge, which is obviously near right near us. We walked from there around to Brentford. Um <clears throat> actually ended up in uh, Boston Manor for any any Southwest London fans. Um but you come across the Grand Union Canal just part way through Brentford. And that canal goes from Brentford in southwest London all the way to Birmingham. Um, it's, a, it's the lo longest canal in, in the UK. Very historic canal. So if you had the means, you could just get on a boat and go to Birmingham on this canal, which I thought was quite cool. And I, I've done some canal boat trips and stuff when I was younger, I did one um, with the locks and the lock key and the gates and all the stuff like that. And it's something I've been thinking about doing, but I don't know how you guys would feel I am terrified of steering that boat um, because I, I can drive a car, but I've never driven a canal boat. And I just know that I'll be on the waterways with all these people who live there. You're going to Austin this for Powers living. that thing. Right I'm going to smash canal. this thing into someone's fucking pride and joy or yeah. literally get it stuck sideways somehow. And everyone's like, brilliant. Now we've got to wait for the recovery crane to come. Well, I mean, it's it. good that you at least have that awareness about yourself because most of the people that end up crashing uh, their canal boats into other people's uh, property and boats um, don't have that awareness. They just think I'm, <laughs> just like, I'm, I'll be right. I'm fucking fucking going for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, they Happens steer the from time. the back. Steering a boat is very different from a car because there's no traction. I know uh, it's just momentum, and I'm like, I I've never done this. So what the fuck? And th this is narrow as fuck. Like you uh, can't tell be you clonking what. into the side all the time. Go to um, take your family to Centre Parks this summer, <laughs> and uh, they have these electric. Um, uh, you know, paddle paddle boat things that you can fit like five people on. How long are they? Um, they're pretty long, and you got to steer them from the back, so it's good practice. Huh? You could do this in like a in like a big lake that has uh, it has like a cord that goes across the lake in the area that you can't go to, lined mm. with fake ducks. Uh, okay. So it's good practice. I, I'm just thinking because they do these holidays. They're like narrow boats, is what they they call them, really. But it's like it is a very long, thin boat. The engine and the, the the rudder, of course, are at the back, and you just have to sort of putter around on the canals. And I mean, you see people, they park them in some quite sort of close sort of <laughs> areas. They're like, you know, cheek to jowl, sort of uh, re really, that must take some, some skill steering that thing. So if I went on a holiday where we hired one of these things, maybe us in another family or something like that, do they give you lessons? Like, is that a thing? Can I go get canal, uh, narrow boat driving lessons? Well, I know a few people who live on these boats and I've been spending a bit of time on them lately, weirdly. Um, so what, you, I, as in you've I'm been pretty... weird on them or it's, all, it's no, weird that you're on them? Just, uh, just it's weird that I have, have been hanging out oh. on these canal boats quite a lot okay. uh, on like the Bristol Avon sort of canal, canal, yeah, yeah. canal. There's this one place on it which has 16 locks in a row. Yeah, that's uh, it's hard like work. It's like a famous hill, Cane yeah. Hill Locks, and it's, it's 29 actually. I, I've done that hill. Big lock. I've done that hill. And it's, it's, going through the locks is a pretty time It's a process. whole day. Like, in you, fact, you, you get up in the morning and you set the whole day, because you have to queue. Like, that's the thing that people forget, is you've got to wait for other canal boats to go through before it's your yes. turn and you got to wait for them so if there's a few boats ahead of you they've got to lower the water get in raise with like you've got to wait and it takes time yeah there's it, a whole team of volunteers a, yeah. come out and we'll it's a whole help you fucking up them thing down them. yeah so 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 first of all like yes it is it is difficult to drive um you're, you're at the back and you can't really see that's the big problem like, yeah you know that oftentimes People have a lot of stuff on their boats and um you know like plants and things on the top and solar panels and all that adds to the top of it, it means it's difficult to see where you're going. That's yeah, like no the, doubt. That's like number one problem. You're quite tall though, so I think it wouldn't be too bad. Um, plus you can get a box. But the other the other big thing is it's difficult to do on your own. Yeah. Because there's a lot of like swing bridges you have to open on the way. Um, some of them are on the on an awkward side. So you have to like jump out of of the boat, you know, or or pull up to the side, jump out, cl like climb over the bridge, open the bridge, go through, close the bridge and then get back on again. 
And so you're constantly pulling over to the side. But actually, like, and yes, they do park really, really tight. But you can kind of just, like, drive in. You know, if someone's with you, they can jump up and pull the, pull the ropes to pull you in. Do you know what I mean? And you always have to, like, hammer, um, like, your boat down with these, like, pins to the side of the canal. So when you, so, so when you stop, you're not yeah. just tying, you're hammering it like a Very tank rarely are there actually concreted in huh. rings or anything to stop. So originally, I don't think the idea was that you would stop all along. There are like stopping places and permanent mooring spots, but right. most people going up and down the canals are just tent pegged in God. to the side. Um, but yeah, I think you do have to have a lesson, and I think it is pretty frightening to do it. Um, but I think actually, if you've got someone helping you at the front, you know, telling you, "I'll oh, go left a bit, go right." A yeah, bit, yeah, yeah, it won't be too bad. But then I'm relying and on like my children to steer the boat to guide the boat yes you and are i'll be honest with you even now left from right is the thing that they struggle with <laughs> these are these are gen z yeah uh, kids who like they, <laughs> they've never had to they still have directions. to kind of hold up their hands and whichever one makes an l if you stick your thumb out that's left <laughs> so i can imagine they'll be like go left and they'll be like are you sure and they'll be like no i mean right and it's like oh shit and now we've hit someone's beloved narrowboat and smashed it and Meh, just scraping, like in Galaxy Quest, where they're trying to get the ship out of dry dock. That would I be me. I, I don't think you should be frightened, especially. I think it is really nice on in nice weather. It's a beautiful place to go. These 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 canals on the countryside, lovely places around. Oh, I'm sure. It is um, it like ha living on one is a whole different kettle of fish. I think because you kind of have to bring down to the canal mm. all of your water, all of your. Um, yeah, I don't fuel. drink canal water. Okay, don't noted. even filter it. You, you right. can't. It's gross. It's it's oh the canal water because a lot of showers and stuff and washing machines just just dump directly into the canal because they're not like sewage. So, but I, but I could this, go from the, on a canal from London to Bristol. I could come and see you. Yeah, you could by boat. I mean, it would take it a would, while. It would go down those locks though. I don't yeah. mind the locks. The locks takes are a long time. A lot of them. It's I think a, there's like a hundred and five uh, locks you have to do to get between Reading and the Thames. Oh my god. I know it's it's pretty. That's nuts. how they used to before um, trains. That's how they used to ship a lot of goods across oh, the yeah. country. Yeah. I mean, that's why there's this huge network is because that was our that was the the you know how shit got from place to place. I mean, jeez, yeah. what a pain is, in the it ass! Is, it is stunning. The history is really interesting. There's a bit near Bath called the um, Dundas Aqueduct. Right, it's a not really beautiful place, but. It's kind of one of these little river river valleys where the river, because the, the canal kind of needs to be built near to the river, because that's mm. where the water comes from, yeah. right? So um, it, you have these pumping stations occasionally, which help you know keep the keep water going into the canal. But then at other times you need to cross the river, so they have to have the canal not touch the river, right? It has to like be built over it or or, or around it somehow. Um, and then also you've got. Because other people you like to use that flat valley that's already been carved out. So there's a railway station, uh, sorry, mm. a railway line, and a, like a motorway weaving through. So you've got this like junction of four different, you know, things mm. of like river, canal, railway, and main road, and they're sort of spaghettied together somehow in this kind of modern way. Um, but yeah, there's this like like Bathampton is particularly a nice place to to walk along the the, the canal side, and, and most in fact. Weirdly, okay, so living on a narrowboat or going to a narrowboat, you need to, you really kind of need a car because annoyingly, it, every couple of weeks you have to move a bit further down the canal and, and you need a car to, to sort of get the stuff you need to, the, the canal doesn't have a lot of the, you know, resources along it necessarily. But also, there's a lot of lovely walks around there. So in fact, you, you think, oh, I'm going to go on a boat, but actually, you spend most of your time walking up and down to, the, to civilization getting in your car and driving back to places that actually have shops oh, shit. and and supply water and stuff. So it's it's I think I think if you just wanted to hang out for a couple of days, I would advise it cause it is a, it is really really nice, but it's not what you would it's not as it's not as idyllic, right? Well, no, as many I mean people would I, I certainly um having been around canals uh they're pretty grim i mean it's not like you go to a canal yeah, oh my think, god i saw oh, like so a dead pretty. deer floating they're, they're by the other grim, day yeah i mean they tend to be in a more abandoned part of the city because you can't build shit there because there's a fucking canal um obviously people don't necessarily hang out down by the canal the, the the one in london there's one in camden there's a canal up around there it's okay like you can go for a walk along there it's not too bad the one over in brentford it's nice enough 
but it feels a bit eerie because you're kind of off the beaten track. You can hear roads and things around you, but you kind of feel like you're in the countryside. So it feels like you're in a weird maze. Well, you often are. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. It's, it's kind of cool, though. Like, it is like remote, but not. Yeah. Um, but you're you're going to see some dodgy shit going on down by the canal. And you're sort of cut off from everything else. You know, it's kind of private down there. It's a bit secretive. I, I'd be worried about getting mugged. How, how do these boats not get broken into all the time? Well, they do. There's, oh. this, there's, a, there's would, one guy. You'd be crapping yourself sleeping one There's of those one two. guy who like steals generators and stuff off people oh and sells God. them on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. One guy and, who's known to. Why don't they just stop this? Well, man. because they, they, cause they, they all, all, you get all the WhatsApp groups and all the local people <laughs> know who he is <laughs> and, keep, and keep an eye out for him. Right. Um, and there's a, there's, a, there's a few kind of. Uh, it's, it's got a few sort of hippie kind of community people as well around there. Like the the people who live on narrowboats are kind of tend to be like the kind of people who live in vans almost, because that's really what they are, like floating vans. Mm, and van so, life, yeah. And so you've got a few people who are kind of very peace, love, and um, smoky weed, kind of very, very, but yeah, very heavily that kind of hippie kind of commune thing. Hippie, kind of, hippie, dread, yeah. dreadlock people, which is which is fine. You get those people everywhere, but. I think I think it's a higher proportion in in that. That's also, true. You've got the enthusiasts, right? The boaters, the people who have wanted to do this their whole life and and love the tedium of going and pumping out all your sewage every couple of weeks <laughs> and you know <laughs> all this stuff. Uh. Um, some people love that, and God knows, yeah. I mean, the the, the horror stories though of like. The boat floating away, you know, and like all these things you hear like so, and, and like having the because the most of the time. The, the the toilet has like a macerator and you can't put anything down it. And if you do, you know, it'll start spraying Jesus poo back up Christ. at you kind of thing. There's like a lot of uh, a lot of exciting like problems that can happen. And some of the some of the river boats are really, really fancy, really nice. Some of them I've seen down the canal look like a flipping one of them is like a, a, it looks like um uh what's it called? A uh, a uh, one of those metal lorry um tr- uh, Packing what? containers. What's it called? Um, what do you mean? The the cargo container. It's called. Okay, there you okay. go. The big metal cargo container. Looks like one of them, except it's like wood panelled, mm. and it's like inside. It's like really high ceilinged and open because you expect the narrow boats to be really kind of um, cramped, mm. especially for you. You're like over six foot. You know that's I'm not. that's head banging territory uh, in a in a narrow I think boat, Sips right? Is. Um, I am. Yeah. You both are, aren't you? Yeah. No, I'm not over six. Foot. You look. You you've got six foot energy. I have the aura. Effects. Wait, um, how how I'm, tall are you? Six, but I'm not like over on the dot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's in the, anyway. That's still head banging down. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like six two, I think. I think so, you're maybe six two, six three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, pre- I'm pretty. But like, when we when we go to the pub and it's slouch, like yeah. Harry, Tom, Sips, and then I feel short, and then like someone like Lulu is there. It's like we brought our son. That's how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> At least, yeah, take me to Disney with you. So I was thinking, um, I was thinking, well, because obviously, yeah, it was Jenny Nicholson is the YouTuber who I watched the uh, oh, four I know hour Jenny long. Nicholson. Yeah, yeah. She, she did a great video of, I watched, I watched the Avatar, what she did back in the day. And I've, I've sort of, I think she's, she's has a great. huge following. Yeah, she's really funny. Anyway, the latest one she was talking about was this Star Wars hotel at Disney, which was, um, the Star Wars Which, hotel thing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah there's. A, I don't know if you saw it or heard about they, it. It's gone now. The video is so interesting. They closed it, right? Yes, they have. So it was. It, I mean, if you haven't watched the video, like honestly, it's it's worth a watch. It, just it, there's she's a so Rolling Stone article about it. Like this, this video blew up so much. People are writing articles about this video. Like that's just well, the way I think it is. She is. She is pretty famous. Um, and and it turned out that I think it went a bit viral on YouTube and me and I was sort of. T- I mentioned it once and. Well, at the pub, and Tom, Ben, just about everyone had also watched it all independently, and we had a really good like chat about it. So, um, uh, but but, it, but it's kind of like the hotel was this. It didn't really quite know what it was. It was supposed to be like super immersive. That was the word they were using all around the, the, the whole thing. It was like basically like kind of like larping. Yeah, you know how Disney wants to immerse you into their world to make you feel like yeah you're part you're part of it. I think they sort of went a bit too far with it and tried to make it, you know, like this this full on role playing experience, except without the budget to make it actually that, without really knowing what they were doing and also charging. It's a every cover you open it. in your room, uh, Admiral Akbar comes out and says it's a trap. <laughs> 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 this is too immersive for me. <laughs> no, I didn't sign up for this shit. Similar to that. I don't know how I feel about this stuff. I mean, 
I was um so I went to the UK board games expo at the weekend. Where was and that? And it was in Birmingham NEC. Okay. And I haven't been there. Was it as since... shit as the Lego thing that was in the news recently at the Birmingham NEC? What was the Lego thing? Were, this was I think a couple of weekends ago, or maybe even just last weekend. Uh and oh. it wasn't as bad as that um grotto, the the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory thing in Glasgow. This was uh, some Lego thing and promised all this stuff like, oh, there'll be all this Lego and builds and all this cool stuff. And it was <laughs> this con. So it was shit. a con that was genuinely a con. Yeah, it was a Lego um, con. It was a con. Um, and everyone's so was, saying this was awful. So, so this was, was a, just a board game. It was apparently game a completely a complete rip off. Yeah. The UK's biggest Lego festival was a half empty room with a pile of bricks. Yeah. Brickfest Live. Yeah. It promised that children and adults would be amazed by life size. Lego models and visitors will be able to visit a marketplace where avid builders can find rare collectibles. Oh, but the image of the event showed large open spaces in a hall with an yeah. inflatable slide and a colouring in area. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, it's, it's it's so tragic when an event like that is that shit because part of me thinks, God, these organisers must have been complete con artists. But another part of me suspects that they genuinely went in with good intentions. Things fell apart. They the date is getting closer. They're starting to panic. They've got they're running out of money. What the fuck do we do? What we've got to have something in this hall. And they put a bunch of stuff in there. And then if I was like one of the organizers, I would be hiding in the back, waiting for it, just praying somehow that people were like, yes, we had a great time. But you know what you're delivering is dog shit. Like I went to Comic Con a few weeks ago. Very slick, very cool. Tons of stuff to see there. And it felt like a really slick, well put together convention. You could imagine it also being complete shit and just the, all the problems are getting away from the organizers. Some of them also are, of course, just con men, um, which is sad. But it, these tickets cost a fortune for these things. Well, luckily, I got some given it for free. Nice. Basically, it, the UK board games, I suppose, been going for a long time. And I t I've lately been playing a lot of board games. Um, there's a thing called Board Game Arena uh, where, I, where you can play games online. I basically got into it over COVID and I sort of tried to set myself a goal to sort of learn a new board game mm. every every day. And I stuck to it for a while. But, I, but ever since I've been back, I, I've played a few games. There's a few really good board games that I enjoy playing sometimes on Discord with folks. And um, anyway, I decided <laughs> anyway. it was time to go to the Board Game Expo because I kind of, we're, we're doing games night, you know, PFLAX. We do a lot of, um, we just did our Lego. Yeah. Um, World War Two video, which came out on Games Night, it's done really well on YouTube. Actually, um, it was a really fun. It's really fun filming things with you and uh, with me. Well, with you particularly, but also I you appreciate know, uh, that. Thank you. Well, <laughs> yes, well, thank you. Also, uh, but but also like just doing miniatures, miniature war gaming, having an excuse to do it. I think I think for me, like you know, and, and this is the same, I'm sure, for loads and loads of wargamers who play Warhammer and collect an army and paint them all and have them on the shelf or whatever. It's it's almost sometimes a shame that these models don't get played with. You don't get yeah. to play the game, right? And so sometimes it's so nice to just have an excuse to be like, I can, I can, I can, I can feel like I've ticked that off. You know, I've yeah. done all this work, I've created all these models, and it's like I've having a classic car in. and never taking it for a spin. You, exactly, you get to show it off to people, right? And I think that that's a lot of these cons are the similar things. You know, people go to these cons to show off their games or to to. to so I, I met, I, I had a great time. First of all, loads of yogs went, um, kind of independently of each other. Um, ben, Ben went with some of his friends. Tom went with his, some of his friends. Mark Humes was there. Lollip was there. A few of my friends that I've met over the years just happened to be there, um, and I bumped into them all. It was, it was kind of a, it was obviously busy, packed, absolutely packed, um, full of people, and it was like three days, you know. And and some people just go to play board games with people they haven't seen for a while, you know. So everyone will meet up, and it's, it's the crowd is my age, Jeremy, you know I mean? which felt nice. Um, <laughs> you know, I certainly feel like going to a a gaming event like Gamescom or go to Disney, like like I, it's a very different age yeah. groups, right? There's families or it's um, younger people. So so yeah, lots of lots of lots of nerds there. But 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 you kind of because it's so packed, you kind of can't be too um, can't be too shy. You know, I think you have to kind of brave the convention hall a little bit and and get out there. Um, but 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 like I said, a lot of people don't. There there, there were a lot of. Um, Re the, the, it crosses over like everything as well so it crosses from war games which is obviously at the far end where you know they're selling grass and polystyrene <laughs> you know hills and things through to like 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 uh, D, D stuff and 
even like fighting fantasy books. There's a couple of indie authors I read who who, mm. met, who who write these fighting fantasy books, and I met Lee, Ian Livingston again, ah. uh, who's who did the original ones. He was there signing copies of his new one. Do you say the like same this- thing to him every time, Doctor Livingston? I presume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You see, he can't walk like, yeah, on any of these uh, adventures, or <laughs> I did. I did. I have no. I'd never thought of that. Um, but I'm sure. I'm sure he hears that periodically. Um, I think he's a bit kind of, if you know who he is, though, he's a bit famous kind of thing. He's a little bit, he's a bit of a star uh, and you can't help but being polite to him and nice to him, especially when he's behind a, behind a booth at an event selling signatures, you know, you have to queue up to, mm. to, to shake his hand kind of thing and say hi. But he remembered who I was, or at least he remembered Simon. So maybe Simon left a bigger mark on him because he, um, he lives in, if you don't know, he was one of the founders of like Games Workshop, I think, and uh, kind of did all of this, you know, did all these sort of fantasy books and stuff back in the day, and it's still a big deal now. There are, there are two Steve Jacksons, though, right? There's this yes, Steve there's Jackson, American the British one, and Steve Jackson, the American one, and both of them, I would say, there were, if there were Ian Livingston, the Steve Jacksons, the independent entities known as Steve Jackson, and, and Sid Meier were, were four of the most influential people on me when I was a kid. Like, yeah. In terms of the games I played, what I thought of games and, and the worlds that they created, enormously influential. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, it's it's hard not to um, be slightly starstruck around him in a weird way. Um, anyway, nice chap. So so played lots of board games, met lots of people, had a lot of fun. Um, I, I, I thought it was like a really, really nice weekend. And I, it was pretty exhausting. You know, I was sometimes, sometimes you'd be playing a game. The thing is, this game, board games encompass so much, right, from drawing a picture of a baby doing a poo or whatever to like, you know, reading a fucking 56 page rule book, you know, and, and just like sitting there going like, oh God, how do we, how do we move our tank forward one inch? You know, it's, it, it, it's like everything, you know, from, from everyone screaming at each other mm. in like, you know, some, some deception game to like flicking, you know, tiddly winks uh, and, and there's, or, or doing a bingo board. There's no like, kind of very there's not really very good consistency in what a, a board game is mm. and it's so broad right like i obviously prefer things that are a bit deeper and you know you have to sit down and think for a while but but there's like you know I, there was like a five different versions of chess i played a game of chess against someone right well, it was what like, are the other versions sideways of chess, chess. Oh, so really? it was like it was like i was you know so the way it worked is <laughs> it was just like you know, imagine the x-axis was one player and the y-axis was the other player, and the okay. bottom player, the x-axis, is going up, but the other player is going right, and so their pawns are all moving to the right, and your pawns are all moving up. So it's kind of like it just cha- it just changes chess, and and in it, I mean, obviously, I I avoid. I don't. The reason I don't like chess and some other games is because I get paralyzed by analysis, mm. you know, and, and there's over too much complexity, right? I think it's. It's a frustrating game because I always feel like I'm not playing it to the best of my ability. Mm. I get you guys get this as well sometimes. I'm sure when you play a game and you're like, "Man, I am not enjoying this because I think I'm making the wrong decisions all the time." Yeah. Um, and so it's much nicer to have limited choice, um, even though that game that you're playing with only three options every turn may well be more complicated. Indeed. Um, you just it just gives you the illusion that it's not. Um, and so yeah, we 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 ended up staying up till like. 1 30 in the morning every morning playing some some different game heavens um the guys will be coming around with in the hotel with hoovers kind of thing like banging our feet just, like get us to leave uh and and it and it was a it was a blast i've got to admit though like i did not i did not eat healthily or <laughs> drink you know i was i pretty much i woke up had a packet of crisps and a flapjack for breakfast you know it doesn't sound some, healthy, Lulu. Some chips for lunch. <laughs> and, and, Wait, like do you have anything with dinner. those chips, sir? It was bad. It was real bad. I had, um, you know. Do so you have some potatoes some, on the side? Sometimes you get some loaded fries. Yeah, bread. Like some. I had some some crisps on the side of the chips. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. It's. <laughs> what are you ten? <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. I did act like I was ten. Um, <laughs> And it's, I suffered Pardon when me. I came back on the Monday and Tuesday when I was like recovering. Oh. I was like, oh God, I just felt absolutely rough. But no, I had a blast. And um, yeah, the world is, is really exciting, I think. There's, 
I, I'm excited. I'd like to. I'd like to try and make my own my own board game. Yeah. Um, what go would, for what it, would, man. What would be the purpose of your board game? I still, I still really want to make like a recycling themed. Oh my yeah, god! Wow, that's, that don't make a board so game. Exciting. Just make. Let's make a PC <laughs> game. Come on. <laughs> That's so I exciting. Make, I think, though, but they say if you're going to make a PC game, you should just make a board game first, right? Oh, and, fuck that. And... <laughs> it's a good, it's a fucking it's, board game. It's games. a good starting place, right? It, um, if you can if you can pull off making a board game, then people could adapt that into a video mm. game, can't they? You know, a lot of video games are just board game adaptations. I know, that, but that, we're talking that, about a game like Satisfactory. You can't make a satisfactory board game. The scale is too large for. I board. know, but that's too large for my brain as well. I no, can only handle like. Come on, you've got a giga you know, brain. Putting your plastic in the right yeah, box. Come on, the come on, big brain. brain I've ever seen. Real bumper. This guy's packing a real bumper. It's very kind of you to say that, but I don't know. So yeah, there's. I don't know. I just I had a nice time. Yeah, um, I'd recommend it to 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 board game fans everywhere. Right, and that's that's all I had to say. So, mm. uh, well, I guess we're done with the podcast. Yeah, thanks everyone. It's yeah, a good um, podcast. Hello there, fellow adventurers. Yeah. Hello. Are you in need of some epic dice for your next gaming session? Oh, yes. am I? Why not check out Misty Mountain Gaming? They've got an incredible catalogue of dice made from all sorts of materials. Stone, resin, glass, metal, silicon, liquid core, and even bone. Jesus. They offer free shipping in the US and they're perfect for any RPGs you can think of. Whether it's Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Shadowrun, Savage Worlds, or even math games. Math games. It involves dice. Misty Mountain Gaming has you covered. They actually sent me a set of dice. Me too. Um, They're so nice. They They are super heavy. So nice. They're the nicest dice ever. I couldn't (laughs) run again. (laughs) These dice, these dice have charisma 16, maybe even 70. (laughs) And Constitution yes. 18, because mine are made of solid metal. So Misty Mountain is the only dice company that offers a lifetime warranty on all their dice sets, including stone and glass. So if you ever smash them or roll them off the table, you can get a new set. They've got tons of other gaming accessories too. Leather bags, leather books, dice trays, miniatures. So what are you waiting for? You can go to mistymountaingaming.com and use code TRIFORCE to get 10% off. That's mistymountaingaming.com, code TRIFORCE, 10% off your order. With the show, I got an appointment this afternoon. Believe it or not, with the dog masseur lads. I'm gonna take, uh, gonna take Aggie to get her back legs massage. No way. That that is lovely. In fact, that ties in with today's sponsor, who is Kato's Coffee. If you like coffee and you love dogs, this isn't coffee for dogs, by the way. You should check it out um, at www.katoscoffee.com. You can elevate your mornings. It's premium coffee, roasted to order, ensuring you get the freshest cup possible. They support animal welfare and eco-friendly practices with every purchase. It has got some delicious flavor profiles, expertly roasted for a smooth, flavorful experience every time. And your morning cup will contribute towards positive change for pets and the environment. Sounds good. Where can I find out more, young Lewis? That's www.katoscoffee, K-A-T-O-S-K-O-F-F-E-E.com. And you can use code TRIFORCE for 5% off your entire order. Find something to suit your taste today. If coffee isn't your thing, they have some delicious teas and there is also some merch for you or your furry friend. Find something to suit your taste today. Thank you very much. On with the show. <laughs> That's great. Well, that's a great podcast. Thank you no, so much. We got much. some news. Hang oh, on. Whoops. Got some, oh. got some 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 news. Uh Atari. Ancient company Atari, who yeah. were Big when when I were a lad, filling up landfills with uh, too many cartridges that they made. Yeah, they didn't sell. famously the famously, uh, the ET cartridges and warehouses full of ET games. But yeah, they buried them all. And there's a video, YouTube video you can go watch of a guy who went and dug them up. So because oh, it was wow. kind of seen as a, a, I'm pretty sure I spoke about this in a previous episode. Um, it was seen as yes, like a right. kind of a uh, what should we call it? An urban a myth, collectible, an urban legend. And he was like, I'm pretty sure they did it. And they found the place, and there were a bunch of fucking cartridges buried in the desert. Yes, so, uh, so Atari, if many, before my time, honestly. My first game console. console. Exactly. Great, great name for a company. Atari. You didn't have a ColecoVision? Didn't. My friend did. I'm no. glad I didn't. It was a piece of shit. Yeah, the, was really the controller bad. was unbelievable. Oh what God. about the IntelliVision? No, I didn't have one of those either. I, I think my friend had a Vectrex. Um, oh. let me check. It, it, it Did was you ever a have a friend that had an Amiga 500? Yeah, God yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I never had one myself. And a Commodore 64? I had a 64. My dad was like, you don't need, you can't do any, you know, you don't need an Amiga. I was like, he's like, next thing you'll get is a PC. That way you can do programming. I was like, people do programming on Atari. He's like, no, 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 no. So the, the Atari sold sold 30 million units, the Atari original. Yeah. Right? And it was released in 19... I want to say 80... 87. 80 87. 87 is uh, the NES in North America. Yeah, but I, I remember having an Atari. And we didn't get it in the 70s. I think I, I would have been about three. Yeah. I, well, three there is a big gap between the Atari coming out and then the NES hitting. The only other thing that you would have potentially had in between is... Uh, ColecoVision. Yeah. Well, and, the, uh, look up Commodore the Vectrex. 64 and, and no, 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 64 was later. 64 was, was it? later. Yeah, yeah, that was the eight bit era because that that was that was that came out at the same time as the NES. Like it was around that era. Oh right, okay. The yeah. Vectrex. God, well, look looks look like at the a Vectrex. Piece of shit, mate. It looks like a little um a little robot friend. It, it's a it's really head. weird. It's like it's literally a horizontal screen. Right, it's really strange. It's weird. Ben, do you remember Gyromite for the NES, the little robot friend? No, I don't. Gyromite. Gyromite. Yeah, he was like a little. <laughs> no, he looked like like a little bit like maybe Wally. Oh or yeah. Something, or something. Oh, are you thinking of Bob yeah. Rob? Yeah, the little R O B. Yeah. yeah. So a friend of mine had that. A kid I knew at school had that, and we went and looked at it. I was like, "What does it do?" It was like nothing. I was like, "All right." Yeah, <laughs> it really didn't actually do anything. I think the yeah, light gun yeah. for the NES was probably better value, right? There was oh, a the couple light, of the games. light gun that looked like that light Duck bazooka. Hunt. No, that was the Super NES. That was the Super NES. What were you saying about Atari anyway? We so anyway, Atari. So at the same time as the Atari release, the Intellivision release, and it was a big rival. It was like Xbox versus PlayStation. Yeah, right? back the, they were they day. were clamoring to get all the big exclusives. They wanted to have and Call of so, Duty and all the big ones, you know. Yeah. So that was 40, uh, 45 years ago, right? Jesus that their, their rivalry was going on. Atari has ended this rivalry by buying out in television. That's right. Uh, it's 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 take taken it over. This is huge news, guys. It's 45 like, wait, wait, years wait. later, they finally did, did they it. They won. They wait, won wait, wait, the wait, wait, console wait. war. Uh, what? They were playing First the long all, game all along. In television, still exists. Exactly, P Flex. And yes. second of all, Atari is back. Atari's been is still is still around. Yeah, they've been. What around. have they been doing? Publishing. What they publish? They publish sort of games. Yeah, Atari not big games. ones, but yeah, not big ones. But they're on they're on Steam. They're and on, stuff. They're, on like, the, they're 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 around. I'm yeah. trying to see they what do, they've done. They do bits and bobs. They're not a big deal. They had to cover all their debt, and then they slowly on, clawed okay. their way back. And on January 27th, 2020, Atari announced a deal with CSD Group to build Atari hotels. Yeah, I mean they're not doing well. Uh, they launched Lunar Land Beyond uh, in April this year. It's got four user reviews. Yeah, I mean that means it sold approximately forty copies or something. Not many. It's a it's a very long drawn out fall from grace. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, uh, not fantastic. So anyway, Atari have bought rivalry's over. It's done. You know I mean? This is like when when a Sonic game wound up on a on a Nintendo. It was like you just appear on our consoles now as a character. Like that's it. Did, do you know what this is like? This is like two people who had like a rivalry when they were teenagers, and then one of them has died. Right. Now, because they're like <laughs> sixty-five or seventy, and the other one's like, "Yes, I win. <laughs> if I win the the grudge yeah. match, and then they Buys die." Buys his yeah. house at auction just to <laughs> stomp around in it. I'm yeah. farting in your house, you dead bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Fuck. We've all been oh. there before. I'm going to do that when you guys both die. Fucking. Um, you're going to come fart in my house? Yeah, do yeah, it. I'll take a shit in your if house. If you die as well. first, I'm going to shit in your toilet. Or well, my upstairs <laughs> one. In, in, in any other sure. world, people people would see that as a good. Thing. I want you to promise me. What? I want you to promise me that gonna, you will. I'm going to shit in your ensuite toilet and yeah, not just, flush yeah. it right in that. While I'm toilet. shitting in your ensuite toilet, I'll be crying and looking at the photo. Of Are you, you going to leave it in there to brew? <laughs> I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm letting that shit br brew for a for couple of days. My family find. Yeah, this is his last shit. <laughs> oh my god, oh, it's completely I don't think liquefied. I can it. How are we? Memories. How are we going to preserve this? <laughs> <laughs> it's mixed in with all the toilet water. Okay, we have to find so, a way um, to separate the water from the shit. So, all right, next up, IKEA mm. has got a virtual Roblox store. Oh, um, a digital IKEA store online on Roblox, 
that will sell stuff. Tarkov's got one of those too, but you just can't buy anything there because it's been looted mostly, but oh, there's never any graphics cards there or anything either. Boom. I see. But this is real. Um, and as a result, they're going to hire 10 people to work in the virtual store. Right. And they're going to be paid an hourly wage uh, of £13.15 per hour mm -hmm. to work in different sections of the store, uh, helping people choose their furniture and serving meatballs. Oh my god, <laughs> I could do that and stream it. Those are the kind <laughs> of games I play anyway. It's just more love, money for you me. Would, yeah, you would love to work. You should apply to work in the IKEA store. I think store. I will. I think that's or a good... Or maybe you could just dress up like an IKEA man and we'll go and just turn up, you know? J just it, just invite myself. There. Just pretend yeah. I, I'm a I'm a employee. Yeah, there's it's like the wild west. This this whole like uh, digital digital it work is. or whatever. Digital it really frontier. Is. That's right. Just yeah. Do what I want. Uh, so that that's the thing that's happening, which I think is quite interesting. Uh, the Red Cross, you know them. Yeah, they've, yeah. Uh, they've partnered with of all people Tetris. Pornhub. Oh, Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that's weird. Could you imagine? Yeah. Uh, yep. So you could get an exclusive Tetris Plus Red Cross shirt. It's like a little plus piece. It looks quite nice, actually. Right. What an unusual tie-in. That is so an unusual, odd. an unusual partnership that I think is nice. Uh, donate blood. Why not? How was the last time you guys gave blood? I can't. Um, I can't. I I don't think I ever have. Oh, God. I, I I literally can't. I tried. I want to keep it all. They were like, no, Mister Forsyth, your dodgy ticker means we can't do that. Really? Yeah. Is that because you uh would would like your blood pressure would drop and yeah, and I think that's the concern that um that there would be an issue. You'd go with, like uh... all pruny and then deflate completely. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it's not, they don't have like a Hoover. So in pop culture news, apparently there are hours of official recording, hours inverted commas, of official recordings of Sonic the Hedgehog saying fuck. Wow. Um, to what end? I missed another ring. Fuck. I'm going, <laughs> I'm doing, going too fucking fast. This fuck. fucking sucks. <laughs> this fucking game stinks. Fuck. Sorry. <laughs> when I said Sonic, I meant Shadow the Hedgehog. Oh. So, there's, um, so in 2005, there was like an edgier Sonic game that was lambasted at the time for having firearms and swearing and stuff. It wasn't quite as bad as, as Conker's Bad Fur Day. Wow. Um, but they were, they were considering making it M-rated, mature rated, which Hi. means apparently there's lots of F-bombs, uh, apparently. Apparently Griffith, the voice actor for Shadow the Hedgehog, recorded hours of f bombs. For, <laughs> that is so <laughs> strange. That is really odd. Uh, they, so he said, they had me record two takes for every line. I swear, the version for the mature rating, they just had me say fuck at some point in the line. It was just every sentence. I would be yelling, Sonic, give me that fucking Chaos Emerald! Or something like that. <laughs> I had no idea what was going on, but I just went with it. Uh, so, so there's a hard drive somewhere with hours and hours of Shadow yelling fuck at Sonic. God. <laughs> that is so odd. I guess they get bored as shit. Like in there's the about twelve yeah. years worth of archived uh, YouTube and Twitch footage of me yelling "fuck" as well. Uh, That's true. Online. That's been your <sighs> life. That's pretty much been my Fuck! life. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. A study showed from the University of Essex. Oh God, you know, a study from the University of Essex. So take it with a pinch of salt. That people feel watching online stars such as Zoella, KSI, and PewDiePie. Who's I don't know Zoella? Where this study was done. Yeah, was this Chit. study done like seven years ago or something? Yeah, it, the, the, it, um, the, the, these one-sided relationships that people have with YouTubers are more emotionally fulfilling than talking to casual friends. So people enjoy and feel happier watching people they don't know on the internet, and they also feel more liked, respected, and understood by them than casual co-workers and Why is that an know, that's, that's, that's That's absolutely 100% believable. Yeah. yeah. Like, so, you could say that about anything. I'm, I mean, if I watch I'm a TV show I love, I feel way happier. I'm thinking of all the co-workers I've ever had, yeah, I'm and like which a ones colleague? I've actually liked. Like, it's like a handful. Yeah, yeah, nobody that, goes to work thinking, yeah. I love all of my colleagues. No, no fucking way. You're stuck with these yahoos. Oh. Yeah. Right. Some okay. of them are cool. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, I made yeah. some good friends through work. You're sure. probably right, actually, because it's like you know, you we we give you this quaffered version of ourselves, right? But we and and you you 
you know, it's easy for us to be likable because we cut out all the bits where we're horrible. We don't cut anything from this podcast. <laughs> but but co-workers and family members, God, some of them are very annoying. Yeah. Um, I mean, especially because, like, if you think about it... I've, you can't we, choose them, can you? No, A, you can't choose them. B, you're generally... Any company is going to have a whole range of people. Like, if you think about when I come down to Bristol or whatever, we're all pretty like-minded. Like, everybody's pretty chatty, they've all got a good sense of humour, we're all into games. There's some commonality there, and we've, we've just, we always, I always have a laugh. Whoever I'm out with, brilliant. Such a bunch of lovely people. That is super rare. Most other jobs I've been to, are like real job jobs, you know, you've got a mix of people, fucking the Karen, Karen in HR, she's a pain in the ass. Tony, the old griper in the corner who's been in the company for 57 years. Complains, hates everything. Oh my god! There's someone who never washes. There's someone who puts too much perfume on. It's it's all, and you're stuck there's with someone them in who's this. Weird office. and hitting on you. All that shit. Weird, yeah. weird, weird. So, I, I, yeah, I fully believe that people enjoy watching their favorite YouTuber. It's the same way I'd enjoy watching, you know, my favorite footballer or whatever. It's like the same oh, thing. It's definitely me too. Like, yeah. I, 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 there's a couple of people I watch, you know, almost every day on YouTube, and I. They're not necessarily big stars or anything, but yeah. I feel like I have a have have. You want to do a I big like up there? You want to big up one of them? <laughs> yeah, you want to big up? You want to big up Tom for a big up? You want to big up? I want to I want to big up Brian Kibler. Brian um, Kibler, look at him up now. Brian, Brian Kibler, you I know him Kibler? At, you got to know Kibler. Him. Who is this? Met guy? him at BlizzCon a couple times. Yes. Hearthstone and, and stuff. He's a, a he was lovely, nice, lovely man. I don't know. He was as, he was as nice. He's always I I I. He he can be a little bit salty occasionally, but he generally has this relentless optimism where even if he's losing at a game, yeah, he will still like laugh and 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 joke about it, right? And that, I think that is a very rare trait in people. Wow, to... he's still making Hearthstone vids. Fair play. Well, I, I think I, know he, his, I think he helped design the uh, the 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 physical card trading game, the Warcraft one, back in the day. Oh yeah, he's he's been in, well. He used to play. He was a magic. He's, a magic. he's still a magic magic pro tour yeah. guy, and so he's um. But but he just has this kind of good positive energy about like, even when he's losing, which which I I, I just admire. Anyway. Um, the UK, all right, is running out of ghosts. Oh, I saw this. What a ridiculous <laughs> what? article. What? Because they've been hunted and contained? No, they're getting old. <laughs> oh, they're, they're moving yeah. on. Yeah, they're That's just getting old. That's a good old. thing, though. That means that they've uh, finished their, their business in the mortal realm. So somebody is, uh, is, is completing a checklist for all these people. They had unfinished well, business. Uh, That's how ghosts work. What's more likely is, I wonder if we could plot a graph Ooh, showing, showing... I forgot to pay the, my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> the increase in phone ownership and the decline in ghosts. Pretty uh, sure there's a, there's a big big uh, correlation there. Just like everyone's saying, what was it a Tom Scott video or someone? Maybe it was Vsauce or something, I don't know. That the, the rise of mobile phone usage has cut down drastically on the number of Bigfoot sightings because you can't claim you haven't got a camera. It's You've got it. It's right there. It's right there. It's yeah. always you with you. You've fucking taken pictures of yourself every time you have a meal. You you know the camera shortcut button. You know it all. It's right there. Where's Bigfoot? Just shoot a picture. Let's see a picture of Bigfoot. Huh? You see a ghost? Just pop your camera. Bam. Film it. No problem. Job done. Exactly. I don't know uh, why, but, I, but at the same time, like when you said gone. that about the ghosts, it reminded me of that scene in Ghostbusters too. You know, when the guy phones up, he's like, "Yeah, we're down at the port, and you're not gonna believe it. The Titanic <laughs> is just docked." <laughs> they call the fucking ghosts are walking uh, off of the busted up Titanic. Oh god, I don't know. I why. love the way that was set in New York, and all, all the guys <laughs> seeing the ghost. Mari, look at this! Hey, you finally There's a made fucking it. ghost! Oh, where have you been, huh? <laughs> hey, you're running out of ghosts. We got a yeah. lot of immigrant ghosts. Yeah, we got right a bunch here. of fucking ghosts. We ship them from? in. We're shipping in ghosts. Look at this. Oh, yeah. we got a ghost. <laughs> we got a whole boatload of ghosts here for you. Oh, um, uh, fuck. That's what you need. You need to go and go. And... Apparently, there are some. Oh, it's like bollocks, this. Uh, you, can, you can recharge them. Uh, oh, what? This, so. This, yeah, this sometimes uh, there's a there's a it could be that a spirit had a natural source of energy to begin with. Fuck. <sighs> Wait, so, so let me get this straight. Time. Not only are we running low on bees, but now we're also running low on ghosts. Fuck the future. Yeah, science, Turns man. out the ghosts were helping the bees secretly. We're not going to have anything at this rate. At the so, heart of every hive, a ghost. <laughs> we next did, thing you're going to uh, tell me is we're running out of Overwatch porn. 
We ju- we just <laughs> we just fig- finished a, a camp of a week of streams called Camp Yog, right? Which is um, which is good fun. And there was did you one, actually go one, camping? Well, no, we went and we redid the Don't Starve challenge, oh. like um, from back in the day, which was fun. Yeah. But 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 we did this one stream where Mark Humes was telling some ghost stories, and they were genuinely like a bit convincing and spooky. Yeah, Mark you know, Humes his... is probably really good at telling a ghost story, though. Oh, really? Convincing. Good. And I mean, really... I think he's done a lot of this sort of stuff where he's yeah. stayed at creepy places, right? Um, and actually haunted, you know, places that are known to be haunted, and it is fascinating to me. Travelodge um, Guildford. How, how, you know, these places. I, I want to know what it is. Have you ever seen anyone that... interact with Mark Humes before, though? Like, you, <laughs> have you ever considered oh, right. maybe he is a ghost? I oh, I see. Yeah, and only I you can see him. I hadn't considered I can that. See dead people. That would explain. I can see Humes. <laughs> I can see Mark Humes at all times. I can see Humes. <laughs> is, is he here with you now? Uh, Walking around like non-Humes. In in other shit news uh paranormal experts say there may be a portal in an english forest that is letting in werewolves yeah oh my god when you say experts this is uh... sounds like some <laughs> twin peaks shit <laughs> paranormal experts yeah is the uh, is 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 the portal in the middle of the woods link up to the white lodge or the black lodge yeah are these good werewolves or bad werewolves are they here to kill ghosts bring us more ghosts do they or talk in bees? reverse and in slowed down time as well. Who, so, is, the, who so is this a picture of, Lulu? Send us a picture of a short, bald man. It's an author called Lee Brickley, who has researched the area for two decades and believes there could be a door to another universe letting in werewolves. I wonder if he's saying that because he has a book to promote. Hmm. He does. Canuck Chase is known around the world as a place where people encounter entities such as ghosts, yeah. phantom hitchhikers, and most famously, the black-eyed child. Do <sighs> mushrooms grow wild there, is my question. He's also oh. atting Elon Musk on Twitter, so... Uh, yeah, whatever, this guy's a crank. He's, he's uh, Elon, he's Elon, his... you'll never believe it. I found the black-eyed child. Elon, Finally. could you lend us a rocket ship to go look for ghosts on the moon? Because we're running out here on Earth. <laughs> we gotta import ghosts. We need back. moon ghosts. We need <laughs> space moon ghosts. ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that happened this week, before we go, um, which I thought was funny, was that North Korea was sending balloons full of poo over the border. Did you see <laughs> no, this? I didn't see that. So they got, they got these. They got these How? inflatable. Okay, but they sent two hundred and sixty balloons. The little nozzle for garbage. a balloon is so small. How is somebody um, shitting into those? That must be really <laughs> tough. You get ah. some good muddy shit, and you pour it in with uh, you have special, to open uh, up the nozzle with like a, yeah, a you large like donut shape. Some poop. Yeah, well, it was actually like a little dog poo bag under a balloon. Oh, um, oh. like a little present. Well, kind of. the, well the South not, Koreans that's stupid. are sending uh, K-pop and leaflets critical of Kim Jong Un over by balloon. Yes, yeah, so that's what happened. So some South Korean activists sent a load of These are North anti- Korean defectors called the Free North Korea Movement. Right. Yes. And North Korea and they, responded with poop. Well, they exactly they sent a load of balloons back filled with poo. They were uh, sending flash drives loaded with K-pop. Little do they know, flash drive technology unknown in North Korea. You need to send over like parchments. <laughs> Something no, like that. Uh, Ataris. Yeah, Ataris. They're like, oh, Atari. Oh, oh wow. They've got all the latest tech over in South Korea, haven't they? You send they're over still a flash drive. Yeah, well, yeah, they don't know what a fucking flash They don't know the war's over. How many um, of them even have electricity all the time, I wonder? Well, in North like, I'm Korea? Sure they, yeah, they must shut it off at a certain hour. They, electricity goes off at eight. Yeah, that kind of shit. You just know they're going to do that. Even if they could provide electricity to everybody, you make them feel like in 1984, you enforce scarcity. To put people on a war footing and make them think, yeah, we're under fucking siege here. We need to knuckle down and, you know, we've all got to pull together. You create that siege mentality, you can get people to do whatever you want. True. Well, there you go. Um, True. That is, uh, that is that. What a fascinating... You timed it perfectly, Lewis. That was an hour when you said that is that. Fascinating well done. S- series of news. Well, it won't be once we trim out all of the guff. There is no trimming. What, oh what my trimming? god, this was what, flawless. What oh, it's a trim There's shit. so much, so oh, so much guff. Sorry. What, are you going to do a five-minute podcast? You fucking fucking dumbass. You're like one of those YouTubers that cuts out every breath and every pause. My kids watch them. It's just a stream of... Like uh, like the chocolate rain guy. Chocolate. (laughs) 
right? Like he has to cut out all the breathing <laughs> in, or he stopped himself from breathing in, or something. No, I don't he moved away that. from the oh, mic. Oh, that's to breathe. right. That he moved thing. away from the mic. He didn't cut out all the breathing. <laughs> Man, I have not watched Chocolate, Chocolate Rain in a long time. Rain. <laughs> Chocolate Rain. Taze on well, I played uh, TF2 with that guy. You did. 138 million views. You show off. He was in a he was in a charity team fortress two game. Why do you me. have to show off all the time? I don't know. I don't know. It was weird. There you go. I have to name drop people that I've heard of. Or Taze on Yeah. He's 42 you now. Do, He's older than me. You want to do a big ups to um, Taze on Day? Is, has he been cancelled really. in some way? No. No. Okay, then bigs up. I think he's not. Up. He hasn't been cancelled. He's just never topped Chocolate Rain, which well, how could you? Understandable. Yeah, it is understandable. I mean, he looks. He's got a real baby face. He's forty-two, <sighs> but he really does have a real baby face. This lad. Apparently, there was a TF2 incident while 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 his, his one of his Twitch streams ended in disaster after trying to fix an fix an audio glitch. Uh, it's been dubbed the Tazon Day. Moment as in, and has been synonymously used whenever there is a feedback loop on I'm MSP. I assume it was some terrible feedback loop happened. Mm, it was absolutely TF2. devastating. Oh my god! So uh, the, it sounds like <laughs> he looks got, like an eight-year-old, doesn't he? He does, but, it, but he's got the voice of a fifty-seven-year-old heavy smoker. I think that's the thing. Yeah, that's but the it, thing so about watch him. this clip. Uh, and essentially, it's eight minutes long. It, it's not like a feedback like you'd expect from a guitar or something. It's just his voice echoing over his own voice, and he doesn't know. And so it just gets louder and louder, and it echoes more and more and more, and the echo echoes back, so it, it's just unlistenable. And he's standing up wearing a suit. He seems to be standing wearing a suit and playing TF2. Very strange. I respect that. <laughs> where's this, he's a classy where, guy. Where's this clip? Uh, Sorry, I'll post it. Hold on. Zip, 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 There it is. Tazon Day plays, on day plays Team, Fortress Team Fortress 2. 2. Yeah. Everybody with this, this, go watch that in your own time. Give it a listen. Then you'll know what we're Just talking think, about. Just think, this could be how the, the Yogscast could be like this, you know? Yeah. But fortunately, we have a very high, I think, a very hardworking studio team keeping do we? us all going. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, yes, editors. we do. Cutting, yes, we do. And uh, making us sound great. Good, good luck with this one. Yes, we do. Uh, Tom H. Tom Thank H. You. All shout right, out we'll to Tom H. That's my shout out this week. That's, That's our big up, Tom H. Thank you so much. Cut that, Tom. Well, we'll see you all <laughs> next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>